So this is the handover for the Mobile Better Key uh, P465. Uh, we'll begin at the front of the vehicle with the diesel filling and the, some of the cab operation systems. External flap, that's not affected by the central locking. You just open it up with your fingertips and then ignition key in, twist, and that allows you then to put diesel into the vehicle and close off. When you first open the door, you'll notice at the end of the dashboard, you've got a lever for releasing the bonnet. Under the floor at the front, uh, you've got your engine battery. And then beneath that, you've got, uh, in this plastic box, your vehicle toolkit. To release the bonnet, aim for the middle. There's a little lever that you push up. And then when you extend the stalk up, then you can go from there. So funnel extensions usually advised for filling up the screen wash. You'll need to take these caps off or your service agent will need to take the caps off if you want to get access to the brake fluid, the power steering fluid um, or the uh, engine coolant reservoir. Oil filler and the dipsticks in front of it. And then should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, using the key just to release this dust cap, you can pop that one up. Positive goes onto there and the negative goes onto this anonymous looking bolt just here. And that will enable you then to jump start the vehicle. On the driver's side of the vehicle, operating the service locker key, you can access one of two service flaps which go in underneath the vehicle, useful for storing things like uh, mains cables and wedges. They fold down and lock them back into position before departure. Above that, you've got your ventilation for the fridge, so that it allows the fridge to breathe. And then you've got your toilet cassette alongside. Little tab there just to hold the toilet cassette locker door uh, open. Flush water system comes directly from the fresh water, so all you need to worry about is emptying the cassette. Pull up on the orange lever, it should come out nice and smoothly, as long as the cassette blade inside has been shut. You've got a handle that you can pull out and wheels on the ground if you wanted to pull it across the ground. Once you get to the service point, you can then remove the grey cap completely, tip the whole container up into the sluice, press the orange button at the top, and that allows airflow into the top, which then allows the waste to go out of the bottom. Before you load it back in, use a mixture of fresh water and either a green liquid chemical or green sachets and about two liters of water mix the two together and then you can then slide the whole body of the cassette back in and it should lock back into position with a nice firm click and it's ready to go there's a flap on the outside um, on the driver's side you have an external continental socket there for mains use. You'll need an adapter if you want to make that work. Um, inputs for um, a F connector for satellite TV as well as for a standard aerial connection. And then below that, there's an external 12 volt power socket. It's a Hella style one, so it's narrower than a conventional cigar lighter. Both garage doors can be locked and secured and they allow access underneath. The little one light uh, which can come out from the onto the side. Previous owners left in there, uh, silver screens, the chairs, um, service kits, uh, mains leads, adapters, etc. Everything that uh, they used or didn't use. You've also got the option of having the blown air heating coming into this space as well. On the opposite side, we'll come round to it in a minute. Um, you've got the access for the heating points and there's also an external main socket there as well. When we open up the other side, you've got a door which goes into the back of the boiler. So these combi units give you both your water heating and your room heating system. They have a frost protection valve, which is temperature controlled. So in the event of the air temperature in this space going below two degrees, what happens is that tap automatically opens up and it allows the content of the water heater to drain out. To reset it, you turn it back through 90 degrees and it's hidden from view, unfortunately. But on where my finger is now on the sort of the far side of this module, there's a little blue button which pokes out and that needs to be pressed back in to allow it to reset. For frost protection, you need to open that valve up manually. You need to open up your interior taps so that the whole water system can drain down and obviously protect it against the cold weather. It's worth noting while we're in here, something I didn't mention when we opened up the cabinet just now, 
that black bag that's inside that plastic box there is your uh, puncture repair kit. So it contains a compressor uh, with gel in it for reflating the tires. Further along on this side of the van, you've got your exhaust vent. So if the water heater or the room heating system's operating on gas, you may see a little condensation plume around that. It's perfectly normal. You've got an external shower point, which you can utilize. And then your gas supply alongside in this external locker. Just mind the cable when you put it up. And again, another flap clip to hold it into position. Two six kilogram propane cylinders. When you are wanting to access the gas, you need to turn the cylinders on via the brass nut on top. So turn it anti-clockwise to turn the gas supply on, turn it clockwise to switch the gas supply off. It goes directly into a regulator and then onwards into the rest of the van. Above the gas locker, you've got your mains hookup. So before you connect into any main supply, it's important that you connect to the side of the van first of all, and then the power supply you're gonna be using. With your mains lead, make sure that the flap is up to about 90 degrees so that it slides in over the top and you should be able to push in firmly and then internally turn the mains supply on. Just below that, you've got your fresh water inlet. So hose pipe, there's one being left by the previous owner and you can hose pipe your water in. You might get a bit of a splashback uh, once the tank is full. If not, there's an overflow on the under underside and you might hear that register. Oops. You've got a, below the other locker, so you've got the locker that's on this side, but below that, you've also got a lever for the wastewater drain. So when this lever is fully extended as it is now, it allows all of your gray water from your uh, shower tray, kitchen sink, from the vanity unit, all to be disposed of through that gray outlet. The fresh water tank uh, drain is actually inside the tank itself. There's a drain plug, we'll show that to you later on for draining that on off. When you first come into the van up above the caravan door, you've got a 12 volt control panel, it's a touch screen. So anywhere that you touch it on, it'll immediately illuminate and display. The symbol is green, that it usually indicates that it's on. Um, and you can see there, you've got one for the outside awning lights, you've got ones there for the interior lights. Water pump symbol shows up onto there. Auxiliary will turn on supplementary supplies like 12 volt sockets, uh, circulation fans um, as well. Up and down arrows go through and they give you a report as to the condition of your vehicle and engine batteries. When you're plugged into mains, both batteries receive a charge, as well as your fresh water and wastewater levels are shown on there. So we've got a tank, fresh water that's 50% full, uh, your main uh, service tanks. There is only one, uh, Mobile Veta, um, there's a couple of different models um, and some of them do have two grey water tanks, but on this version there is only one grey water tank on two there. Settings menu, you can access and you can change dates and times if that's what's required or even set an alarm clock to get you up in the morning. and it then takes you back to the front menu. So you can see your voltages, your interior and exterior temperatures. And then all I would suggest is that you do turn off your water pump when it's not in use, stops it from pulsing or running through the night, uh, trying to maintain pressure. So if you take away the corner cushion on the sidewards facing seat, beneath here, you'll see your leisure battery. Back, you've got the weight plate there which is showing you what the uh, manufacturing weight is it's different to what's under the bonnet these are the prescribed weights that they expect you to go to so a maximum of three and a half uh, tons uh, a five and a half ton tow limit if you wanted to pull a vehicle behind you there's a couple of false panel covers um, set into the floor. The one nearest the front of the vehicle has got your mains RCD, your battery charger and your 12 volt fuse boxes in it, as well as an isolator uh, for the battery system if the battery is removed, perhaps. As far as the mains goes, you should start with these in the off position. Connect to the side of the van, connect to the main supply that you're going to be using. Push the smaller switch away from you. You can do a carry out a test to make sure the main supply is safe by pressing in that switch there. And then you can then turn on the main supply accordingly. 12 volt fuses for the interior operation. There are some um, 
illustrations next to each value of fuse to tell you what they are connected to. Battery charger, as long as you've plugged it onto the main supply, uh, that will work in conjunction with any solar panel that's fitted, uh, giving you a maximum charge into the battery. The other panels, you've got just a plain storage one in that one. Further back, you've got a bottle store under this one, which I think is quite snazzy. All right. And then between the kitchen units, uh, sorry, between the bathroom units, there's one final one under here, all right, which is a slightly deeper storage area. When we move into the kitchen area, there's a line of uh, drawer units. The bottom one is actually a hinged flap, and then you've got four isolator taps for the individual appliance groups around the van. So for the uh, cooker, for the water room heating system, for the oven, and for the fridge. In the direction that they are at the moment, they are all turned on. If you rotate them through 90 degrees, then it isolates the supply to that specific unit. So you've got a sink cover, which can actually be double up as a shelf mount, um, ready to go into the van. We've also got a towel holder as well, which goes up there, or you can use these as panel hooks as well. With the gas hob, having established that you've got your gas supply coming through, go for one of the burners. So with the burner's lid, it's worth noting that there's no isolator on these lids. So if this glass panel comes down over the top, it, the burners will continue to burn. It will cause the glass to explode. So when you switch off the burners, allow them to cool for a reasonable period of time before you bring the lid down for traveling. On the opposite side, you've got your uh, oven and grill. So open the door sideways. If you turn it in a clockwise direction and press the igniter in, it will give you your grill. Hold it in for a couple of seconds, just to let the thermocouple warm up. And then in the opposite direction, it becomes the oven, which you can see underneath the grill pan there. Fridge controls, you've got one raised surface switch, which when you press and hold in, lights up the entire display. The left hand button allows you to change between the different modes of operation. There's an automatic mode where it will self select as the vehicle is either being moved, driven, um, or uh, being connected to the mains. Um, and it will choose between a 12 volt, um, a mains and a gas supply, or you can manually adjust it. So permanent mains, uh, battery feed setting, which will run when the alternator is on to sustain the temperature within the fridge or a gas if you are wild camping. Thermostatically, it's controlled by this. So the more of these squares that are illuminated, the colder the fridge will become. And you have a defrosting setting, which you can access on there. Fault codes will may well come up onto here if you um, don't have uh, supplies coming through. On both the fridge and the freezer doors, you've got little stays which will extend out and these allow you to um, ventilate the fridge for winter storage. Your room heating and water heating is controlled through your Truma system. If it's not done so already, when you turn it on, you'll typically see a time clock. Because we're currently plugged into the main supply, you'll see this symbol here indicating just that. When you first tap the button, you'll see a series of characters uh, appear along the top there. The first one that you come to is for your room heating. Select on that flashing one and you can then turn up and increase the room temperature to your desired setting up to a maximum of 30 degrees centigrade. All the time that it's trying to achieve that temperature, you'll see that the flame symbol will begin to flash. Once it's reached that setting, then the flame symbol will become solid. It's a similar story for the water heating. You move it over to the off position and then you can keep it up to an eco mode, which will bring the water temperature up to 40 degrees, or a hot mode, which will take the water up to around about 60 degrees. There's an in-between mode, a boost setting, uh, which will take the water from 40 to 60. We'll set it up in the hot mode, so it's ready for you for uh, checking over. You have a choice as to where you draw your uh, energy from. So at the moment we've got it set in the electric two mode, which is the equivalent of about a 1600, 1700 watt electric element, using two separate elements together to give you either a combination of electric water heating or room heating or both. 
if you were on a weaker amperage site, then you could turn that down up to a one position. It would obviously mean that the uh, system would take longer, but it would still attempt to get to up to those uh, desired room temperature and water temperature settings. If you're wild camping, then you would put it into a gas mode and it will purely draw from gas. In colder climates like we are at the moment, then you can put it into a mixed mode, either a low level electric or a high level electric mode. And again, it will then bring the temperatures up accordingly. You can adjust the fan speed with, in conjunction with the heating system to improve the warmth. Independently, you can turn off the water heating and the room heating system, and you can just use the fan on its own just to turn over the airflow, just to reduce um, some of the humidity that you might have in the van, um, if that was the case. All of these settings can be used via a timer. So you can set up your time clock uh, to display the time, and then you can roll back to the time setting and set up a basic guide, which will take you through and allow you to maybe set the water heating or the room heating system to come on, on at a certain time and go off at a certain time. For the electric bed, there is a key operated system. Um, if you've got small fingers around, you may want to take the keys out to prohibit it uh, from being used. But once it's turned on, you should be able to um, elevate or raise the bed accordingly. There is a separate bunk ladder which will be sent on to you um, in due course uh, once the owner returns back up to Scotland. We'll be able to forward that on to you. Toilet operation is a sort of old toilet, so you can manoeuvre the seat base into any desired setting. To make use of the toilet, you need to make sure that the slider is open first of all by using the grey lever. Let your waste go through, and then in conjunction with the water pump being turned on, you should be able to send fresh water around the inside of the bowl accordingly. Close the slow dot after use and you'll get an indicator light coming on um, adjacent to the blue button telling you uh, when it needs to be emptied. So the original configuration is designed to be slept as two single beds but if you want to make it up into the double you've got a bunk ladder access here which can come forward and when you pull that forward, it also then acts as the floor panel. A little bit of a firm tug just to get those over. So it locks into position. Inserts can then be dropped into the center and then your mattress protectors, comfort mattress, covers can go on top as well and that then gives you your full double bed accordingly. The rear bed ladder up. Uh, start again. Rear roof light. The rear roof light has a handle on it which you can use then to wind up and open. Make sure that roof lights are wound back down and locked into their closed position before departure. On this you also have lines and a flight screen for day or nighttime use. When you wind it back down, you should see two latches appear and two little red tabs appear in these little chambers, indicating that it's locked shut. And then just make sure the handle's back into position and that the roof light is nice and secure. Side windows all operate around the same basic idea. So you have a button in the center of the latch, turn it through approximately 90 degrees. Side windows are on little gas struts, so you can then push them open and they'll stay in their open position. Before you return the window to being fully closed for storage perhaps, or if it's a warm night, you can leave them in a ventilated position you must make sure that they are fully closed before you set off to travel. There are lines which come from the bottom and there is a fly screen which comes from the top and the two can be joined together and you can position them on a mid position to filter light if you wish. 
The window on the uh, passenger side bunk at the back is above the ventilation for the water heating room heating system. So it's important, um, although this label is in Italian, um, that you do not open this window if you are operating the water heater or room heater on gas. Underneath forward-facing uh, rear seat, you've got your fresh water tank and the pump. Uh, when you take off the red inspection hatch, you'll see beneath um, at the base of the tank, you'll see a lever. And if you pull up on that lever, that then allows you to drain that fresh water tank off, which you would do for winter protection or for cleaning and cleansing the tank. When you replace the red cap, it's important that you screw it down as much as possible. It has got a seal on it. But as you can see from the inlet pipe for the fresh water supply, when you are filling these up, if you're using a high pressure hose, if this is not properly secured, the water will overtop and obviously potentially then flood into the rest of the van. Below the central table, you have got a lever which you can use to pull up on and it enables you then to maneuver the table into any desired position, uh, forwards or back, side to side. Once it's fully over, there's an insert which goes into this section so you can take the insert out if you want to travel with uh, two additional passengers. Alternatively, with the insert board pulled forward, you can then slide it in and push it in to make it into the L-shaped lounge. Cab seats. On the side of the passenger seat, there is a lever which you can then turn driver or passenger seat around. The armrests only have one default position. The backrest can be adjusted on the spine. And then on the side of the driver and passenger seat, there are paddles which you can use, which enable you to elevate or lower the height of the seat accordingly. Moving into the cab, on the driver's door, you've got your uh, external uh, mirror controls. So the electric mirror adjustment via the ignition and you can use the toggle to adjust um, all four mirrors on either side of the vehicle. And then behind that your electric uh, window adjustments. Curtains provide you with your insulation and nighttime use. Behind the steering wheel, you've got um, electric adjustment for the uh, headlamp beam. So if you're laden with goodies, uh, then obviously you can bring the headlamp beam down or up to compensate. And you've got also a single rear fog lamp on the back as well. Mode button gives you access then into uh, various menu settings for calibrating your fuel consumption, for example. Right hand stalk is for your wiper controls as well as your screen wash. Accordingly, steering wheel controls are connected up to the uh, head unit for the radio controls. Top left hand stalk is for your indicators as well as for your lights. And then below that you've got your controls for your cruise control and also for your speed limiter so you can move it in either direction for the different settings and increase or decrease the speed accordingly on that control. Reverse on this vehicle, pull up on the central lever, push over and push back and that will give you reverse and it also then gives you an image onto your reversing camera as well. With that unit, you've also got access to your navigation system as well as to your radio. and you can obviously connect it to your phone too. Climate control system, you can position the vents to wherever you desire. Adjust the temperature on the left hand button. Choose whether to recirculate the airflow in or from outside, as well as obviously directing all the heat towards the heating of the windscreen and that also engages the elements that are on the mirrors as well and then you have an air conditioning button for summertime use. Central locking will provide locking to the cab doors you still have to lock the caravan door separately there's a hill descent and a traction control alongside your central hazard light switch. 
clipboard that can be extended upwards with a firm tug and there's a lever on the side which allows you to release it and it can be used then for gripping perhaps a mobile phone or a tablet if that's required. Close them in firmly, close that back forward and then push down. Flap at the top opens up into a locker which is connected to the air conditioning system so you could use that as a fridge if you wanted to in warmer days. And then below the passenger airbag you also have a separate smaller uh, glove box. There are USB ports as well above your cup holders and you've also got a USB charging point and a 12 volt charging point in front of the third cup holder. I hope this gives you a comprehensive view of how this van operates. On behalf of Highland Camper Vans, very thank you very much for watching. Hope this van's going to give you lots of smiles and lots of smiles, but if you do need to get a hold of it in contact with us, then please do either via phone or by email. Thank you very much for watching.